Let's keep exploring what we can do with objects. We're back with a program that we used in the functions tutorial. This program has this draw Winston function, which knows how to draw Winston at a certain x and y. And then down here, we call draw Winston four times, each with a different set of x and y coordinates. Well, you know me. When I look at those four draw Winston calls that are so similar looking, all I can think about is how much better it would be if we could use a loop and just call it one time inside the loop, changing the x and y in each iteration of the loop. So to do that, we need to find a way to store these x and y positions in an array so that we can loop through it. Well, we have two sets of values, so what we could do is have two arrays, um, one for x positions and one for y positions. So x positions, we might have 99, 294, 101, and 294. And y positions, we'll have uh, 117, 117, 316, 316. OK, and now we can loop through those with our for loop, far equals 0, i is less than x positions dot length, i plus plus. So we're going through each element in x positions. And we'll say draw Winston x positions i's and y positions i. OK, um, so let's see if that worked by deleting. All right, that worked. Uh, so now we can actually just call this, you know, we just have this one line of code that does draw Winston, but it does it for every position in the x positions array. Uh, so we could go and add more to this by saying like 10, and then we add 1, and then we add 1, and then 1, and then, and then a, hundred and one. Now, now it's getting to look a little bit messy and I don't like it because it's really hard for me to see which X's relate to which Y's. Um, and uh, I don't, I don't, you know, I want to kind of be just able to look at a glance and know what my X, Y pairs are um, instead of having to make sure that I, I perfectly line them up above each other, you know, like this maybe. Um, so I want to find, I want to find a different way of storing these positions. Now, one idea is that we could actually store them as objects because think about it, each position is really two bits of information, the x and the y. So we could have an object which has x and y properties. And then we could have an array of objects with all these x, y positions. So let's do that. We'll say var positions equals, and this is going to be an array as well, but each element instead of being a number, is going to be an object. So here we have our curly brackets, and then we're just going to say x, 99, y, 117. OK, so now we have one of our positions in here. And then we'll go add another one. Oops, we'll add another one here. All right, x should be 294, 117. OK, the third one is going to be 101. 316, and the final one is 294 and 316. Okay, so now we have an array of objects where each object has x and y properties in it. And so down here in our for loop, we'll just change this to iterate through positions.length, and then we'll pass in the object. Now, right now, it's passing the entire object, but we want to pass the x and the y. So we need positions i dot x and positions i dot y. Ta-da! Now we can get rid of these old clustered arrays. Great. So this looks a lot nicer to me and makes the code much more readable. And anytime we can have more readable code, it's better. And it also makes it easier to add. So if I want to add one, um, I'll actually add the pair together. And then we can say, you know, x200, y200, get a little Winston in the middle there. Cool. Um, now I want to show you something even fancier than this. Notice how our function right now accepts two numbers and then uses those two numbers. Well, we could change our function so that it expects an object and then it gets the x and y from that object, meaning that down here, we could just pass the object. Let's try that. So we pass the object. Now it's broken. That's because our function still is expecting two objects, and it's only getting one. 
So we'll change it to say it's getting face position. And um, now we get an error, which is face x is not defined, because before we were, we were passing in face x as an argument, but now it doesn't exist. We're only getting an object. So what we could do is actually save the x position um, from the object inside the face x variable. So we're saying, OK, we got this object. We know this object has an x property. So we're just going to store that into the face x variable. And then we could do the same thing with y. So face y equals face position dot y. Ta-da! And then, you know, the rest of the function, it uses face x and face y. Now we have to make sure we spell them correctly. If we did xx, it's not going to work because that's not what it is down here in our array of objects. So it needs to match. But this is pretty neat because now you can have arrays of objects, you can have functions that take in objects, and you'll really find that your, your programs can be very powerful um, with the way that they, they structure their data, and especially since it's so often to want to pair x and y together. I think you'll find them especially useful in all your drawing and animation programs here. So go to it and have fun.